With November, we take steps closer to the solstice. In the northern hemisphere, winter approaches in earnest. In the southern, the sun is welcomed back and temperatures continue to rise. The November night sky this month is also a time of astronomical activity with active meteor showers, planetary close approaches, and even a few extra astronomical events we don't get every month. Hopefully, the skies will be clear and dark for you to enjoy at least one, or to get out for one of these other astronomical events happening in the November night sky. November 1st, Mercury at its evening peak. Mercury is our sun's innermost planet. This means it always appears close to the sun and is lost in the sun's glare much of the time. To kick off the month on the first, elusive Mercury will be back in the west after sunset and reach its greatest apparent distance from the sun in our sky. Mercury is observable for only a few weeks each time it reaches its greatest separation from the sun's greatest elongation. This repeats once every three to four months in the morning and evening skies, depending on whether Mercury lies to the east of the Sun or to the west. On the nights near this evening peak, Mercury will be as high as seven degrees above the horizon. This is substantially lower than it was earlier in the year, but it is still one of the best times to see Mercury as it shines brightly against the dusk, making it a spectacular sight for dedicated sky watchers. November 5th, full moon. The moon will reach full phase. At this time of the month, it is visible for much of the night, rising at around dusk and setting at around dawn. The sequence of full moons that fall through the year are sometimes assigned names, such as the beaver moon, according to the months and seasons in which they fall. November 12th, peak of the northern Taurids meteor shower. On the night of November 12th, head outside to try and spot the northern Taurids meteors as this shower peaks in activity on the 12th. The Taurids run from approximately October 20th to December 10th. On the night of peak activity, you can spot up to five meteors per hour. Look for the Taurids radiant point in the constellation of Taurus. For most people, it will be in the eastern or southern sky, depending on your location. Keep your eyes peeled in the general direction of Taurus but look around that area of the night sky to spot meteors with longer tails. Unfortunately, the moon will be around last quarter phase at the shower's peak, presenting minimal interference with spotting these northern taurids. November 17th, peak of the Leonids meteor shower. As the end of the calendar year gets closer, there are more meteor showers to enjoy. Why? That's just how our orbit works as we cross the debris paths of comets and asteroids during our celestial dance. The Leonids meteor shower occurs in the November night sky for most of the month, but the night of peak activity is November 17th this year. If you're out this night, look for up to 15 meteors per hour depending on your location. It's also possible to see Leonids each night between November 6th and 30th. I've got a full guide to this meteor shower if you want to try and see it. The Leonids appear from a radiant point in the constellation Leo which will be in the northeastern sky for most people. If you can spot the Big Dipper slash plow, you're in the right part of the sky to spot some shooting stars. November 21st, Uranus at opposition. Uranus will reach opposition. Lying in the constellation Taurus, it will be visible and relatively brighter than usual for much of the night, reaching its highest point in the sky around midnight local time. The term opposition refers to the alignment between the Sun, the Earth, and another object in our solar system. It's when we sit in the middle, kind of like the alignment of an eclipse over huge distances. When opposition occurs, the object on the other side of the Sun in opposition to the Sun is brightly illuminated, and great for viewing hence Uranus being at its brightest of the year on this night. November 21st, a monocerotid meteor shower. This year, the Amonocerotid meteor shower will be active from November 15th to November 25th and will produce its peak rate of meteors around November 21st. If you're out with a telescope looking for Uranus, you can also keep an eye out for Alpha Monocerotids. The radiant point will be highest in the sky after dawn 
so the shower is likely to produce its best displays shortly before dawn when its radiant point is highest. Lucky for us, the shower will peak close to the new moon, and so the moonlight will present minimal interference. November 28th, peak of the November Orionids meteor shower. Everyone gets excited about the October Orionids. Did you know there's another Orionids shower in November? While it runs from November 13th to December 6th, the shower is expected to have peak activity on the night of November 28th. This isn't a particularly active shower, like the October Orionids or any others this month, and the maximum ZHR is expected to be three per hour. To spot these meteors, look in the general area of the constellation Orion. You don't need to look right at the radiant point to spot them. Instead, sweep your eyes through that area of the sky. Close approaches and lunar occultations in November. Like the past few years, 2025 is a big year for lunar occultations. That is, times when the moon passes in front of other objects in the night sky, from our earthly perspective, of course. Of course, the moon is always passing in front of stuff, but certain lunar occultations are notable particularly when it passes in front of another planet in the solar system. Here are the close approaches in November. November 2nd, close approach of the Moon and Saturn, 3 degrees 13 minutes apart. The pair will be on the border between Pisces and Aquarius. November 10th, close approach of the Moon and Jupiter. The pair will be 3 degrees 50 minutes apart in Gemini, at their closest. November 29th, another close approach of the Moon and Saturn. They'll be 3 degrees 18 minutes apart this time. Once again, they'll be on the border of Pisces and Aquarius. Have other questions about these astronomical events in the November night sky, or how to see them? Let me know in the comments. For space updates, subscribe to Secrets of Space.